there winos, this is Vince.Wine, and I know we've just passed our New Year's Eve celebrations, but in my book it is always a good time for bubbles. Especially if 2021 left you feeling a little blue. Let's pop the cork on this bad boy um, <laughs> and just see what it's like on today's wine lab. Hey, thanks for joining me. And before we get started today, if you want to be a winoceros, hit subscribe on this channel to become a wino today. I put out new videos every single Saturday, so be sure to hit that bell icon to stay notified for more great wine content. Feels like we haven't done this in a while. It's good to be back. Okay, I have the Bel Air Blue. If, if you're a fan of this channel, then you know I love gimmicky wines, and I just couldn't help myself as I was in the store today just looking for an interesting wine. This just caught my eye, and I couldn't get past it, so apparently I'm a little late to the game. There was a huge online influencer sort of rollout for this. I know Gucci Mane was behind this. He was putting out all these really cool, interesting uh, photos and videos promoting this wine, and he partnered with with Rick Ross on this as well. And this was just sort of everywhere. DJ Khaled and Wiz Khalifa, two gentlemen who I always try to take my wine advice from. And, and a lot of big names like that are really getting behind this wine and it makes for some pretty cool looking cocktails. But how does it fare as a standalone wine? Let's take a closer look at the bottle. On the capsule, you have the Bel Air uh, brand right there. And here you have the name of the wine, Blue. And it is done in a pretty traditional champagne style bottle here. Here we have the established date of the producer. So it is a product of France, probably not in the Champagne region, which is why it's not called Champagne on the label here. But it, they are really trying to note that this is in fact a product of France. So Luc Belair, this is a, a traditional sparkling winemaker in the region of France. So uh, this is a limited edition blue. And then I believe they just have some tasting notes on the back. This is sort of giving me hypnotic vibes. If you remember um, if anyone still drinks hypnotic but um, yeah so it just has some tasting notes there which I don't really like to read I want to just see it for myself but the interesting part is that it is an easy 12.5 percent on the alcohol so it is within the typical sparkling wine range there especially for champagne and I believe it was 30 grams per liter of residual sugar which is just about right for uh, a slightly sweet uh, champagne but uh, still enough dryness in there to be uh, interesting okay I am really excited to go ahead and pop the cork on this guy here. Look at that super cool capsule on top. I do really like that, the cage around the cork. Yeah, the one thing they got right is it does really stand out with that beautiful bright blue color. Beautiful. <laughs> You typically don't want that pop. You want it to hiss to save the bubbles, but I got a little excited. And in case you didn't know, the punt of the bottle is that little divot at the bottom there meant for your thumb so that you can pour. And let's go ahead and get this in the glass. Holy moly, that is so cool. I love that. So one of the great features is that it's not just a, in fact, look at that. The glass is actually clear or flint as we say. And uh, this wine is actually blue. Super, super cool. I found no explanation as to how they got it this blue color. I don't think it was a natural part of the winemaking process, especially for $32. I'm thinking this is definitely food dye or coloring. But um, if you winos have done any deeper digging, please let me know in the comments what you found out about why it's blue. Okay, let's take the nose and I gotta tell you, this is extremely aromatic. I've definitely been able to smell this the entire time without even having to put this up to my nose, but let's just see how it goes here. Oh my goodness. Okay, right away, I do get this very artificial style flavor here. So think along the lines of like blue Jolly Rancher or along the lines of like sour blue gummies and candies like that. Okay, beneath that, I think I'm getting a little bit of tropical fruit. Nothing along the way of toast either. Just berries, lots of berries, I would say. Um, blueberries, certainly, probably from power of suggestion, but yeah, some bright berries, blue raspberry, and, and not too much else. There is really that artificial sort of candy flavor is pretty dominant here, pretty straightforward. Let's take the palette. Okay, this continues to confirm the blue artificial flavors for me. Blue airheads, blue cotton candy, like this is definitely in that, any blue artificial thing you've had, um, this is in that flavor profile for sure. 
I would say there's an interesting sensation on the mouthfeel for me. I'm not sure if it's just me right now. I'll, I'll keep coming back to it, but there was a little bit of bitterness on the mid palate there. It was a drying bitter sensation that I wasn't quite expecting, but then right after that, you just get that rush of flavor that comes through. And if there's one thing I can say about this wine, those bubbles are really, really fine. I actually do quite like the mouthfeel. They are sharp, tiny bubbles, and then they get kind of frothy as you swish it around here. Now, notice one thing is that it's already sort of done sparkling here, so it's not like intense, intense bubbles. This is probably gonna go flat in a little bit here. I don't see much happening in there, but for what it is, it definitely is going to hit you the right way that you want your sparkling wine to hit you. Yeah, it's kind of already dying out on the fizz. Um, that's a bit of a shame. Yeah, the coolest thing about this wine for sure is the fact that it's blue, unfortunately. But I will say that that is a really cool thing. I can't deny that. First of all, that bottle is going to look amazing on any shelf uh, in any wine bar or club. And this in a glass is just super intriguing and so sexy and just cool looking. It's eye catching. And certainly I can see this as a really great base wine for cocktails. It's it's not overbearingly sweet. Um, it is very, very fruity and candy flavored, but it is leaning more toward the drier side. So um, adding anything else in here could really uh, dress it up, maybe even some fruit and vodka and other, so other, other, other sauce. <laughs> but um, uh, no, I, I think that's really all there is to this. For 30 bucks, unfortunately, just not interesting enough that I would ever want to buy it again. Well, there you have it. Winos. That was Bel Air Blue. Uh, definitely needed all the big promotion that it got in order to sell it, I think. This seems pretty trendy. Uh, who knows? It could catch on and be a staple moving forward of wine bars and clubs uh, just for the cocktail thing. And as long as the celebrities stay behind it, of course it's going to sell. But uh, as far as the wine community goes, I don't think this is going to stay very interesting for long. But it's fun to look at. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, please leave me a like. That helps so much. Don't forget to share this video with your wine friends. And until next time, winos, drink safe and drink well. Cheers.